It could be best of the year. This is a very popular summer style beer. Uh, it seems like every summer we get a little more tonnage of watermelon to slice. The backbone of this beer is a German style Helles Lager, and we really want to keep that intact uh, and just give it a kiss of watermelon, uh, fresh watermelon at the end. Love its watermelon lager. I'm drinking a Love its right here. Uh, this is a German lager, it's a, it's a Helles Lager, and basically it's a real light in color, real light in body, uh, very drinkable, very sessionable, is what we would say. Since I started working here, it's been the most popular beer. People are coming through the doors and asking for half kegs, uh, quarter kegs, six fulls. We have really loyal customers, great fans of the beer, and when they hear it's coming out, they, they really attack us. Blue, I'm kind of blue. I'm so sick and over you. I'm going to take you guys back to uh, check on the weights of our watermelon. This one's weighing in at 17 and a half pounds, which is probably the biggest we've had so far this year. This melon then gets dropped in a water bucket where we wash off all the dirt. They make their way to this cutting station over here. Everyone's got their own technique, but we usually uh, half and then quarter the melon, um, and then we start uh, slicing out the flesh from the rind. knife that cuts the melon. Once we have that, we make it into a puree, um, so it's easy to work with. And then we put that into the kettle. The kettle heats it up. Then we pump that into kegs, basically the same thing that you would have in your kegerator. Even though it's a fruit beer, I still think of it as a German lager because you don't um, get an overpowering sweetness from the watermelon. You still get the really clean lager finish. We start brewing this beer. Uh, early May in order to have it out by uh, Memorial Weekend. It's kind of our kickoff for this beer. Customers are ready for it. Uh, we're ready for it. This beer is one of those beers where we can't seem to make enough. It, uh, it's always moving. So you got to stay, stay in front of the watermelon. When we first started home brewing, that was one of the first recipes that we got into. Uh, we really wanted to make a fruit beer one summer. We wanted to do something different, but that was also very American. And uh, we, we just kind of realized that there was nobody using watermelon. And I knew there was a reason, uh, you know, probably due to the fact that it's more challenging to use and, and getting the right ratios of how much you have to use to, to get a flavor in the beer. Because watermelon is a very subtle fruit, contains a lot of water. Uh, so it's, it's very challenging to work with. It's probably one of the toughest fruits to get flavor out of. The first batch turned out to be almost spot on. We were really pleasantly surprised to see the flavor coming out in the beer and, and really taste it in the beer itself. Um, but with that being said, there's a fine line because you want it to taste like a beer. Um, you know, After all, it is a beer. You're putting all your hard work into the malts, the hops, the yeast that you use. And so you know, we really wanted that balance and not just this overpowering flavor of fruit in the beer. Well, I think it's popular because it tastes good. We'll bring it upstairs and give it to all our fans. One more show in one more town. A lonesome song and a lonesome sound. Yeah, a few more sets, and I'll be home. Then I'm gone back on the road. I hope these wheels, they don't fall off I hope this train goes on and on Take me back, I can hear calling, calling me